and uh, you have now come after two papers. So on Sunday and Monday, two consecutive days, 720 marks, 720 marks. It's a good practice, isn't it? This type of uh, you know condensed paper system is only in this part. If you go to any best college of North India, you will not find that they are doing so much of test which we are taking here. That is good because maximum learning happens when you prepare for the test and when you write the answers and there when you commit errors at that time maximum learning happens. In my class I very clearly said about the ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm and uh, so many of them listen but some of them could not listen. I told them that nerve cord is ectodermal and uh, Notochord is mesodermal, okay? And many times this comes, I do tautology also, repetition also, but someone make it a mistake. And now, uh, so test paper one question has come, he committed the error, okay? After that error, now he will not repeat the error. Now he learned that might be he did not listen that properly. Now, my dear children, some questions which we are thinking Two questions in the cumulative paper where uh, answers need to be changed. In one question, answer has to be changed. In the other question, two answers are given, which means uh, I think two and three, five and all that answer is given. Okay. Although it has not come from the author so far, but I think that she will accept these two and without any problem, she will accept these two. So what are those? Let me, <clears throat> meanwhile, I will discuss your doubts in the question paper. Initial three, four questions we are discussing from the question paper. Yes, please. If the question you have, you can, if you can, please uh, send me the WhatsApp. Or at least write the, con the context, in which context it is. Good morning, children. Good morning. Very good morning. Today we are starting with core data. I mean, we are completing the core data. We are doing the tetrapoda. So we'll complete this topic today. We'll try to read also, but we'll try to compare on board. Hmm? Good morning, Priyanka. Good morning, Gayatri. If you have any questions, any doubt in the paper? There are two papers. One is a weekend paper. One is cumulative paper. No doubt is there. Very good. And uh, in the cumulative paper, in the long term, cumulative paper, cumulative, and that to geology. Two questions which just now someone told me, but I am missing the numbers. Which are which need some correction in the key. Okay, so the given key is different, and the correct answer is also different. Yes. Do you remember those questions? Do you remember those numbers of the questions? What is happening today? Very few are writing in the uh, group. Today, minimum wishing in the class. I think I am audible to everyone. Good morning. I am audible to everyone. Okay. So what happened? Looking into questions, sir. Okay. Second question, sir. Part A. Part A, second question. Okay. And uh, do you know the number? Which, which number is that? There is one part A. Okay. Subhas. Subha. Shub, Subha. <clears throat> uh -huh. Which number? Uh, I just missed my mobile. I wrote on the board and I missed to take the picture of that. I have taken one class now. Children asked me. I wrote the correction like this only. At that time, ventral nerve cord. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Ventral nerve cord. One is uh, about uh, the 
uh, five and all. Okay. So how many are there? Five and one answer is all. One is this one. This so yesterday only in the group I shared that there is there is some correction. Both have to be there. I think that is question number eighty-eight something, eighty-eight or fifty-eight. Just check fifty-eight or fifty-six like that. Eighty-eight, eighty-one. In these numbers, I remember some mistake is there. Okay, don't worry. Um, if you take out, it is good. How many of you scored one eighty on one eighty in geology? Like in both the weekend test and also in the uh, you know cumulative. In the cumulative, if you just add uh, marks to the corrections, okay. So I am saying now after correction, after correction. So whatever marks you have to give after correction only. If you remember the question number right now, you can give me. I'll do the corrections on board and then you can tell me your marks. Seven seventy-five are in both with correction. One eighty in cumulative. Okay, very good. One seventy-five, sir. One seventy-five. Question number. One seventy-five. One. Acha, because uh, in online the numbers are different. Okay. Question number one seventy-five in online. In online questions, uh, numbers are changed. Good. True. 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 Online they are different. Okay. Okay. One sixty-five weekend. One seventy-five cube. I don't know about this weekend. Can you share the question, Sri Vaishnavi? One eighty. Very good. Bless you. Bless you. God is great. Very good. And I'm also happy. One seventy-five, Priyanka. Bless you, Vita. It's really commendable. Very good. One seventy-five in cumulative. One sixty-five in weekend. Okay. One eighteen weekend. One seventeen space. Okay. Gayatri. Very good, Gayatri. The number in weekend is very motivating, and one seventy is also very very motivating. Which are there. After that, it is only by chance, by our hard work and will, we can come to 170 or at max 175. After that, it is just a chance. Sometimes we miss that, and sometimes we get that. You know, right? So, but this is still a very good score. Anyone else? You you want to share? Anyone else who have scored 165 plus? Maybe 165 or more than 165, like that. One sixty-five or more than one sixty-five. Some people have shared their marks, and that is really commendable. We can make some corrections that I will be doing, and meanwhile I will start with the tetrapoda, guys. Okay, so let us begin with the tetrapoda. I want you to please make this table. I want how? Your mobile. Ka. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Tetrapoda. Tetrapoda are A R A M R M A R A M. We will write the characters and the points of comparison. So we will compare all of them. Okay. So we will put the comparison character, and then this is amphibia, reptiles, and birds and mammals. This we can do. Birds and mammals like this. Comparison in tetrapoda. Comparison in tetrapod. Amphibia, reptilia, and apes, and mammalia, and mammalia. And here we'll write the character. Character. So the first character we are discussing is uh, the presence of the paired paired appendages. So we have they all have got 
paired limbs. So paired limbs are present in all. Okay? So one thing is the paired, paired limbs. Paired limbs are there, or two pairs of limbs are there, and this is present in all. In all of them, it is same present. In all of them. Okay, hind limbs and forelimb. In birds, in birds, the hind limb is modified for walking, for walking, and the forelimbs, the forelimbs have become their wings. The four limbs have become their wings to fly, to fly, and the hind limbs they become uh, modified for walking. So they have a different plan. Mammals they have two pairs: upper limb, lower limb, or four limb, hind limb. Reptiles in some reptiles uh, limbs are absent. For example, in snakes. Okay. For example, in snakes, snakes limbs are absent. Limbs are absent. Limbs are absent in snakes. Okay, and amphibia, two pairs of limbs are present. In snakes, limbs absent it only secondarily because even they have the remnants of the girdles and limbs. So it means that the ancestor of the snakes, they had the limbs, but now in the due course of evolution, the limb has been lost. In all of them, in any one stage of their life, notochord is present. In none of them, notochord can be found after birth. Because they all belong to vertebrata. They have a vertebral column that is common for all of them. Ex the exoskeleton, if you ask me the exoskeleton comparison, they don't have any. So their scales are absent here. Scales are absent. They have a very slimy, very uh, you know, wet skin, moist, moist skin. They have a very slimy, you know. But in case of reptiles, they have dried, cornified, dried, cornified skin. Now they have a dry one. Cornified means hardened skin, having. They have got uh, scales or scoots. <clears throat> scoots, scales or scoots. Uh, one thing that uh, in some of them, the exoskeleton is shed. Okay, So shedding of the exoskeleton occurs in some time of their life and this is called molting. This is called molting. So you'll find molting in some of them. For example, in snakes, we find that the shedding of the, uh, you know, exoskeleton occurs. In birds also, in birds they have a dried skin. They have a dry skin and uh, having feathers, full of feathers, okay? And they have got claws, claws in the hind limbs. In the hind limbs, they have claws. They have a dried one. Some of these birds, they have got preen glands or oil glands. Okay. So oil or preen. Preen glands are present. Preen glands are plus means present. Preen gland. Ekra, preen gland ekra. But a preen gland are found in the tail. In the bird's tail, you'll find the preen gland. Okay. So... <clears throat> And you can find that sometimes they keep on, uh, you know, by their beak, they keep on massaging the preen gland. Okay. So they have got preen gland. Preen gland. This helps them oil their feathers. Okay. So it does the oiling, oiling of feathers, of feathers. And this is happen, this is required. So that, you know, uh, they can shed water. They don't become so wet easily. Because if they become wet easily, they cannot fly. They have to they have to adapt many ways so that their weight can be reduced. They have got pneumatic veins, uh, pneumatic bones. And other, uh, for example, they have a single ovary. They don't have a urinary bladder. They don't store the urine. And they have the, uh, you know, uh, single ovary. 
the preen gland can be found at the base of the where it is there it is at the base of the tail it is this is a end of the tail and here is the base of the tail from where the tail is uh, attached to the main trunk at that part you will find the preen gland oil glands oiling of the feathers okay this is about the birds now coming to the mammals now mammals also have a dried skin we also have a dry skin and uh, we have some like hair here we have uh, horns not we have but mammals horns hooves hooves nails horn kya hote hain beta horns hoof the foot you know the foot claw is called hoof they have got strong clawed foot and that is called hoof nails are there nails hair these are dried structures but and we have both the type of glands for example we have the sweat glands sweat glands sweat glands plus we have sebaceous glands we have sebaceous glands sweat glands and sebaceous glands so they help in excretion also and they help in keeping the skin wet uh, moist all i mean moist and uh, oil uh, the hair the natural oil of the hair uh, you know that is from the sebaceous glands if the skin become too dry it start cracking so it require to keep the skin little uh, you know uh, we can say that moisture moist moisturized so we need the skin to be slightly moisturized not too much and not too much dried because otherwise the skin will have cracks in winter season you people don't have the winter season here but we have we are from a place where there is something called winter <laughs> so yeah so we have to apply some moisturizer on the skin so that otherwise the skin is not uh, you know cracking so sweat glands are primarily for uh, thermoregulation and secondarily they are for the uh, you know secre excretion dear children after this let us uh, discuss some more points for example i'll now discuss some basic points in them that do they have an amnion or not do they have an amnion amnion so amnion is only present in the reptiles apes and mammals i call them ram ram have amnion so they are amniotes they are amniotes so r a m i call them as amniotes amniotes okay these three are amniotes and this one is an amniot n m n i o t n m n i o t shall i write to some points which can match with the amniot which is present in all the amniotes i'll write those points okay point number 1 is their fertilization okay first i start with the cranial nerves cranial nerves cranial nerves are 10 pairs in an amniotes okay here there are 10 pairs can you tell me in the amniotes how many cranial nerves are there i believe all can if they can listen they can answer 12 pairs 12 pairs including the mammals 12 pairs in the amniotes but in the anemniotes for example in frog they have got frog has 10 uh, 10 pairs of the cranial nerves and 10 pairs of the spinal nerves in frog 10 pairs of the cranial and 10 pairs of the spinal also both are there okay done now dear children <clears throat> after that let me uh, more like uh, reproduction so in reproduction the fertilization okay so fertilization please remember that all the amniotes they have got internal fertilization they have got internal fertilization internal fertilization all the amniotes they have internal fertilization and external in case of external in case of uh, you know an amniote external 
but in amniotes they have all have internal fertilization dear children hope you have noted them down uh, okay let me go a little higher and i'll add some more point or what i can do here rather than okay i'll go a little high little high okay in tetrapoda we are comparing the tetrapoda characters in tetrapoda now after that you can say that uh, in them the development is uh, direct okay so they have got direct development they have got direct development don't expect any larval stage in these three but here there is an indirect development in some ncrt in some ncrt uh, indirect development when i was writing in one of the classes when a student stand up he said sir in my book it is written both uh, external and internal uh, sorry both direct and indirect and uh, then i confirmed from the latest one uh, yeah so i think it has been corrected if your ncrt also says both direct and indirect please change it to only indirect now here the prototype is the frog keep the frog in the prototype and frog has tadpole larva yes it has got tadpole larva good okay so this thing you have to remember i think these are the points in uh, reproduction i can say whether they are oviparous or they are oviparous or viviparous oviparous or viviparous oviparous or viviparous okay beta so please remember that all three of them are ov these are ov these are ov and these are also ov and this is a viviparous this is viviparous we know that only some ex uh, ex exceptions are there like platypus like echidna okay these are the monotremes monotreme means the mammals which are oviparous but in general uh, the mammals marsupials or the placentals they don't have okay so we can call them as uh, viviparous they don't lay eggs however the three of them like the amphibia reptiles and birds they lay eggs either from which class the shelled eggs can be seen from which class the shelled eggs because you know that even the uh, okay tell me any example of a fish or any category of fish which is viviparous fish chondrichthyes cartilaginous fish very good chondrichthyes it is viviparous most of them are viviparous however osteichthyes are oviparous my question is and yes you answer correctly and the question was from which class we can find the shelled eggs and the correct answer is reptiles because even in the osteichthyes and in the amphibia they don't have a covering around the egg in amphibian they have a jelly coat but jelly coat is not for keeping them uh, you know uh, always uh, the moisture inside jelly coat is only to make the egg so unpalatable that the normal predators that are found there they don't eat it okay it's very unpalatable they don't even go near to it where the eggs are uh, you know laid so that's the reason jelly coat is uh, released and all the eggs are then uh, and all the eggs are kept at one place and a big jelly coat around so that it will not be attacked by the predators but there is no such covering which can keep the moisture inside however in case of the reptiles from reptiles we can we have seen that they have got the shelled eggs so first time the eggs with the shell in both of them we will find that shelled eggs are present shelled eggs they have a calcium carbonate shell a calcium carbonate shell can be seen in reptiles and birds the first time reptiles they got the shell but the problem with the unshelled egg is that it dries up on land suppose one day frog forgets the way to the uh, pond hmm? 
However, it is not possible because there are many stimuli that only happens when it goes to the pond. Then only the copulation, they have a pseudo population also called amplexus. Suppose if there is no pond, all ponds are dried up. Some water bodies are there which animals can drink, but the, such, there is no such water where they can go. And they lay the eggs on land. Within one day, 40% of the moisture of the eggs will be dried up. And from the next day, the egg no more remains viable. It is good for nothing now. If it is happening, then these cannot survive. They always require a water body near them because, okay, they can live for other days. They can even go inside the soil and live for some days. They can go into hibernation, a starvation, but, but, but uh, reproduction is not possible. They were born in water and their babies will also born in water. They themselves were born, uh, born in water. So therefore, the first true land vertebrates are reptiles. Okay. So can I go to the next page? My point is the first true land vertebrates. So the first true land vertebrates answer is reptiles assertion assertion reptiles are considered the first true land vertebrate reason they are the first one to have the cledoic cledoic or shelled cledoic means shelled eggs they have a shell of first time they are the first time in the animal kingdom cledoic eggs can be seen okay in the vertebrates i mean i mean in the vertebrates cledoic eggs first time so the true land vertebrates are reptiles. We are not saying true land animals because arthropods are there. But otherwise, vertebrates, in vertebrates, uh, cledoic eggs were seen for the first time in case of reptiles. So if this assertion and this reason, what do you think about the answer? Answer is one or answer is two. In this assertion and reasoning, is it one or is it two? Hmm. Both are correct and reason is correct. Explanation as well. Very, very good. Yes, the answer is one. One means both are correct. Assertion, reason. One means in the previous, uh, when AIMS test used to happen. So there, they have a standard thing like one means assertion, reason, both are correct. And reason explains the assertion. Second means both are correct, but reason does not explain. Third means Assertion is correct, but the reason is wrong. And the fourth means both assertion and reason are wrong. So this was the, uh, you know, the formula or pattern in AIMS examination. My dear children, I hope you are looking at your NCRT book or the PDF of NCRT. And in my meanwhile also, you were reading some points and learning. Moreover, you have seen the previous, if you are writing that and you are just looking at back and trying to learn it. Now, let me write some more points about, let us see their digestive system. In digestive system, we need to just write them. All of them have a complete gut. That is true. So my point is, my point is whether character 
amphibian, reptilia, birds and mammalia. And here is character. Character, this is amphibia, reptiles, birds and mammals. Understood that M, B, what this means. Character is now their elementary canal. The elementary canal, elementary canal has additional chambers. For example, additional chambers like uh, if I ask you, uh, like gizzard and crop, crop and gizzard. In which vertebrate do you find crop and gizzard present? In all, in one or like which one it is there? Only in birds. Very good. So, beta crop and gizzard. So, the two, uh, one is crop for storage of food and gizzard. This is 2018 NEET examination. Gizzard is present 2018, 2019, 2018. Uh, crop and gizzard is present only in the birds. It is absent here and it is also absent in the other one. Coming to their respiratory system, beta. In the respiratory system, I can say that uh, the amphibian, they have got three. For example, they can respire through their moist skin. Okay, the skin should be moist and they have a moist skin. Number one, they can respire through their buccopharyngeal cavity, buccopharyngeal 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 cavity and also the lungs so i am keeping the lungs at the last this is the order this is the order of preference and in their larva larva is fish like so their larva use gills larva does not use any of them larva uses gills however you will find Reptile, apes and mammals, uh, they have got lungs. So lungs are present in all three of them. But if I ask you, and let me just check my children now. If I ask you, out of these three, the most efficient respiratory system is found in. The most efficient respiratory system is found in. Mammals, okay. Uh, Android one saying mammals. Priyanka saying mammals. Aditya saying birds. Aditya saying birds. And anyone else? Anyone else want to say birds? Jayanti says birds, okay. So Jayanti and Aditya, I really appreciate your answers. Because only your answers are correct. Mammals, you don't have the birds. They have most efficient respiratory system. So the most efficient, most efficient, efficient respiratory, respiratory system is there with the birds. So birds get this Padam Shri award for the most, refi most efficient respiratory system. Let me just put some light on this. Let me put some light on this. And what is in the birds? So birds have got non-respiratory air sacs, okay? You know that these air sacs are different from the cavities in the bone. That is a different thing. These air sacs are different thing, okay? So they have got non-respiratory air sacs, okay? Let me make a bird here. Okay. Let us see if they have a nostril here. And so now the lungs, they have a different type of lungs. The lungs do not have alveoli. In place of alveoli, lungs have got air capillaries. So fine capillaries, so many of them because they are very thin. Air capillaries, we call them air capillaries. Okay. But the main difference is not this one because, uh, but because of this, there is one thing happening. And I'll tell you what is that. Just one second. Air capillaries, these are called air capillaries. Air capillaries. How the inlet happens, how the air goes inside. The air goes inside from the nostrils, 
then uh, before that they have got many air sacs in the front part of the body and many air sacs in the behind hind part of the body and just let's take all of them as one because they all work in the same way and the posterior group also let us take all of them as one and they are also connected to the lungs now the nostril is connected to the tube here and this tube is actually first going into the lungs uh, into the posterior air sac now here it is not exchanged because they are non respiratory air sacs what are they they are non respiratory non respiratory respiratory air sacs what do you mean by this air sacs that means they can expand or contract they can expand or contract but non respiratory surface there is no exchange happening on their wall no exchange exchange only happening inside the air capillaries this is uh, conducive for gaseous exchange this is conducive this is conducive for gaseous exchange gaseous or gas exchange gaseous exchange not these air uh, sacs but they help they assist now what will happen uh, what will happen now this air will go into the lungs so second time when it contract this will go into the lungs this is how the valve system is there and this will leave the lungs in this way so there is a unidirectional flow of air in the lungs after that uh, it is now collected in the posterior group from here it comes in the post i am just making a little uh, brownish to show you that now exchange has occurred here and now from the posterior the outlet is there and this will now come into and the same tube it can go out you understand so what is happening once again once again what is happening when the expansion takes place when first time expansion takes place air is drawn inside the posterior then contraction take place so this air is contracted and it comes into the lungs then in the lungs exchange happens then expansion takes place so this air will go here and new air will come here and then contraction takes place so now this is exhaled out when contraction takes place this is exhaled out and this air goes inside the lungs so there is a unidirectional flow uni directional uni directional flow of air uni directional flow of air now this is the main point of difference in these birds the point of difference is that uh, there is no there is no residual volume okay there is no residual volume residual volume they don't have any residual volume and because they don't have any residual volume this is a main point of difference why because uh, what is happening the exact po2 which is in the air is now available for exchange the exact po2 which is available uh, here is Uh, ready for exchange my again point is the exact po2 is now available for exchange i'll tell you one thing in the human lungs uh, the po2 is 1 not 4 inside the lungs but in the air the po2 is around 160 or 159 mm of mercury according to ncert and 1 not 4 in the alveolar air um mm of mercury you understand this 104 so what has happened because of one from 159 it come down to 104 now this happened because in the lungs already some residual air is there which is co2 rich so this fresh air does not remain as fresh as it is outside and now the one which is available for exchange is 104 and here it is not there so if it is on land it is getting full 159 available for exchange if it is on land full 159 is available but if it is ascending up 
okay and then what is happening after a certain height the amount of air is less and they have to fly long distances for example the flight by the migratory birds so this system helped them because then what is happening even at a higher height even when the po2 is less their system is efficient enough to absorb the air uh, oxygen from the air if we ascend up okay we need a cylinder of pressurized air or whether we are in a <clears throat> tube in the fuselage of the aircraft then what is happening there is a compression of air already there it is very much compressed you know that whole fuselage of the aircraft is very much compressed and it is computerized like how much height according to that height the pressure is increasing as it is descending down according to the uh, height now left the pressure is well calibrated therefore passengers don't feel any big change when they ascend or when they descend but in cases where the uh, the flight some accidents happen where suppose uh, if uh, any part of the aircraft is broken or someone fires and uh, uh, one part of the aircraft is broken then the big problem is when is the low temperature there very low temperature almost minus 40 minus 30 minus and under freezing and number two is that the oxygen in the air is not that much right so they have got lesser oxygen because the overall pressure as at a height is less makes sense so therefore if because we don't have an efficient system we have to carry a cylinder these birds cannot carry a cylinder in fact they cannot carry any weight in fact they cannot carry even their own weight so god has given them pneumatic bones so air cavities uh, see pneumatic bones air cavities are different from these air sacs these are for respiration those are there so it is and they are not same this air is not going in there pneumatic bones is a separate cavities air filled uh, you know sinuses present in the bones you know uh, how many uh, urinary bladder birds have zero Birds don't have a urinary bladder. Birds don't have two ovaries. Bird has only one ovary. Wherever God can do some minimize, some reduction in the weight, God has done that. God wants that, okay, some egg are required, okay, let us uh, give one ovary. So that the weight of overall body, the weight can be reduced. At minute level, many other changes are done. So that they can be the body is conducive for flying. I hope you understand. So that means they have to inhale twice and exhale twice in order to suppose if they want to take this air. So now there are two inspiration in one respiratory cycle. Okay. So one inspiration it will go into the posterior. Okay. Now expiration from posterior it will come into the lungs. And now inspiration from the lungs, it will come into the anterior. And now expiration, it will go out. So there are double inspiration, double expiration in order to complete one cycle. And I hope you understand why this is so. I hope I have explained you quite enough, even little more than what you are supposed to know. Uh, okay, the most efficient respiratory system is found in them. Okay, now coming to the excretory system. Excretory system, I don't find any difference so all of them have got kidneys however reptiles birds and mammals they have a little advanced kidney uh, we can call it as metanephric in these three there is a more advanced one metanephric metanephric kidney metanephric kidney most advanced one here we have got the mesonephric kidney, mesonephric, mesonephric kidney in adult of the reptile, so oh, amphibian, sorry. And mesonephric kidney is simpler than metanephric kidney. Metanephric kidney is actually the hind kidney. The rear part of the tissue becomes a kidney, meta. And mesonephric, the middle part of the whole tissue 
becomes the kidney. That's a difference. So excretory system, I don't find any, po any point of difference in excretory system. And uh, in case of the nervous system, uh, let me write down. I think I have written down about the nervous system, about the cranial now stand pairs. Okay, that I think I have done that cranial nerves, okay, that's the main difference in the nervous system. Now, some other uh, specialized things, for example, uh, in the amphibians, uh, the first time tympanum appears in the amphibian. So, they are the first timing for the tympanum, tympanum present. They are the first animals, first animals to have the tympanum. Before them, there is no such ability in the animals, okay, to can hear, those who can hear uh, the sound like the ear. Vibrations can be felt, but sound, hearing, that is not there. Now, coming to the reptiles, I'll tell you that they have a very poor hearing. They have very poor hearing. In fact, the snakes... Snakes are almost deaf. The snakes are deaf. The female snake does not listen to the, the, the you know, that organ, mouth organ called, uh, you know, bean, the mouth organ, which the sapera used to play and, you know, just make the, uh, the women, <laughs> female uh, uh, snake dance. No. That dance is, not, it is not a dance. We are irritating it. Actually, she is just, Chasing this tip. We are making that movement and she is actually chasing the tip. Just preventing itself that if suppose if it, it can hit, I can just, you know, be aware of that. For animal, it, it is a danger. It is just got scared. It is not hearing anything. If you stop it, if you just turn your face and you play the tune, no one will dance. No one will dance. If you just turn your face and don't move, even the sound is there, but they don't, because they cannot hear the sound waves like we can hear. So they don't have ears, but they can smell. They can smell very strong. Snakes can smell, okay? They have a very strong sense of smell. In these reptiles, which don't have these, for example, the snakes. In the snakes, Who are hearing? Okay, in the snakes, they have got a vomero nasal organ which help them in smelling. I'll first write down the hearing. Now, hearing it is present in both of them. Hearing in birds and hearing in mammals is there. I'm telling you about the uh, smell, about the smelling ability. Can you please tell me which one has got the minimum smelling ability among all these animals? The minimum smelling ability, those who have the minimum smelling ability among these vertebrates like amphibia, then reptiles and avis or birds and mammals. Now, who will tell me? Who will tell me this? Having the most uh, less developed, less developed smell, less developed. Amphibians and apes, yes, yes, you're right. Amphibians and apes, okay? So their smell is very poor, okay? They have a very poor smelling sense. Smell ability, smelling ability, they have poor. Reptiles have good. They have good. They have again poor. And they have good. In some of them, it is immense. In some, it is immense, like dogs, it is immense. In reptiles, they have a special organ called vomero, vomero nasal organ, vomero nasal organ. Say with me, vomero nasal organ. Okay, just remember VN, vomero nasal organ. This is also known as the Jacobson organ. We can also call it as Jacobson. Jacobson's, Jacobson's organ. They have a special organ, Vomero, 
वो मैरो नेजल ऑर्गन विच गिव दैम गुड स्मेल दे कैन स्मेल गुड विद हेल्प ऑफ देयर वो मैरो नेजल ऑर्गन आका ए के ए और सनोन एस जे कब्सन्स ऑर्गन जे कब्सन्स ऑर्गन एम्फीबियंस ए इट इज वेरी पुअर एम्फीबियन आल्सो पुअर एंड मैमल्स दे हैव गुड हाउएवर let us compare now their circulatory system shall we okay so let us compare their heart okay i am just comparing their heart heart okay how many chambers are there in here three chambers how many chambers three chambers how many chambers four chambers how many chambers four chambers let us conditions apply anyone who is uh, can you please actually what is happening you know some uh, pop up has come a participant request that live transcription be enabled for the meeting uh, can you put it down or else i will do something someone has done that we don't have that to do here please decline that i'll just try to use this pad okay i'll decline that enable and decline theek hai a participant request ye kyun nahi ja raha hai yaar okay now god okay so here they have got two atria one ventricle here also two atria one ventricle and here also two atria two ventricle and here also two atria and two ventricles okay so this is please remember yes uh, someone have written amphibian reptile partially divided ventricle okay in reptiles they have a part uh, partially divided ventricle or the you know so we can but in terms of counting we will count it as three only in crocodiles it is four chambered crocodiles is four chambered very good okay and uh, yes except in the crocodiles in crocodiles in alligators in alligators uh, they have got four they are four alligators crocodiles they have four make sense now the complete double circulation the complete double circulation double circulation is seen in these two double circulation and here we have incomplete incomplete double circulation incomplete double circulation okay incomplete so it is just uh, it is evolving more and more and more so as it is going we are going further the heart is evolving and their circulatory system is also evolving coming to whether they are cold blooded or they are warm blooded whether they are cold or they are warm blooded warm blooded cold or warm blooded have you touched a bird it is warm bird is warm okay because even though outside it is cold but birds can maintain its body temperature so as the mammals okay they can also maintain the body temperature but these two they cannot maintain their body temperature we can call them as cold blooded and they are also cold blooded cold cold warm warm in fact in the entire animal kingdom birds and mammals they are known for being warm blooded or homeothermic they are called homeothermic homeo homeothermic homeothermic only these two guys are homeothermic these are called poikilothermic 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 they are called poikilothermic these two and those are two are homeothermic homeothermic i think uh, and uh, yes cloaca who will tell me cloaca cloaca bachcha tell me cloaca kis kis mein present hai cloaca is present in amphibian yes it is present in amphibian is it present in uh, uh, reptiles and birds chudu 
Is it present in reptiles and birds? Cloaca. Yes, crab. Very good, Kiran. Very good. Very good, Kiran. Your uh, trick is remember, you remember the trick very nicely. Crab, C for cloaca, R A B. Okay. So R A B, reptile, aves, and birds. Crab. Crab, reptiles, aves, and birds. They have got cloaca. Crab, reptiles, aves, and birds. They are known for having cloaca. Very good, very good. <laughs> okay, I think uh, you have ever or you have know this trick from someone or you have ever attended the class, my class, because I told that crab. Okay. Uh, maybe you have yourself made that because it is obvious. It is obvious, no? Mm -hmm. Some tricks that we have made about the cloaca. Cloaca is present in Acha. Cloaca is also present in chondriac thief. Chondriac thief. Cloaca present in chondriac thief. Amphibians, reptiles, and birds. I made carb. Okay, you can also make crab. Okay, chondriac thief, amphibians, reptiles, and birds. I think crab will be more uh, catchy. Okay, let's make it crab only. Okay, let's make it crab. I really appreciate crab your creativity so this is chondric thief amphibians reptiles and birds remember that in case of chondric thief however ncrt has not mentioned that but they are viviparous chondric thief uh, they are quite different from osteoic thief okay so in evolution yes sir last year trick sir this crab okay you only tell it for us okay kiran okay thank you for remembering beta and uh, this trick is papa for internal fertilization. And in case of the, uh, you know, chordates, in chordates, only they have external, uh, internal fertilization. In chordates, internal is in uh, chondric thief and only in the amnutes. These three classes, these three and one chondric thief. Rest all, they have external fertilization. That means bony fish, external fertilization. That means protocordates, external fertilization. So in case of osteoctis, external. In case of osteoctis, <coughs> osteoctis. In case of urochordates, cephalochordates, cephalochordates. And also in case of cyclostomes. In case of cyclostomes. In all of them, they have external external and internal is in the amniotes which are reptile aves and mammals please remember them okay done dear children ncrt reading let us complete so that we, we can cover even some points which are there in the ncrt and uh, we have uh, not touched and also the examples because those examples we have not touched. Can you tell me any animal where the male become pregnant? Any animal where the male become pregnant? Actually, male become false present, uh, pregnant. Pseudo pregnancy in males. Yes, hippocampus, seahorse, pseudo pregnancy in the males. You know, generally, you will find in the animals. Okay. So the main attraction is the female. And all the males are trying to woo her or they are trying to impress her 
and uh, it is a female choice to mate with one and to mate with like anyone it is the female choice maybe one or more than one all choice is with the female almost we human beings have also uh, because that is in our memory memory means our uh, inheritance memory and uh, this is also we are also having the same uh, you know uh, nature where the female becomes the center of attraction and all the males are trying to impress her males will be males <laughs> but in case of hippocampus it is opposite here the male is the center of attraction and all the females are trying to woo her woo him and they are trying to impress him so that please mate with us because who can be the best husband than them that they don't need to even uh, keep the eggs or even incubate the eggs no parental care they can be free absolutely free okay they can lay the eggs and then after that every work can be done by hippocampus even no need to for uh, you know even coitus also not required you can do spawning and uh, only in the water as because they have external fertilization in osteoctetes external fertilization so even there is no problem with the coitus the females are the always at the winning end so there the males are tracked and the males are being uh, so i have uh, noticed this in national geographic i have noticed and uh, after i uh, uh, you know took the subscription and i am finding so many interesting things and the way they explain the way they give the all the complete you know uh, cinema they make their photography everything is so much mesmerizing okay so you cannot even uh, leave till that episode is over dear children amphibians the name indicate amphi means dual bios means life amphibians can live in aquatic as well as terrestrial habitat most of them have two pairs of limbs body is divisible into head and trunk most of them the body does not have a neck or there is no tail so there is no neck here and there is no tail here no neck no tail okay so head and trunk and in case of arthropoda head thorax and abdomen in case of uh, our uh, uh, hemichordates they have got proboscis collar trunk proboscis collar trunk arthropoda head thorax abdomen amphibia head and trunk tail may be present in some for example the tailed amphibian the salamander the amphibian skin is moist without scales the eyes have eyelids yes the eyes have eyelids a tympanum re represents the ear alimentary canal urinary reproductive tracts open into a common chamber called the cloaca cloaca yes some someone asked me the cloaca cloaca means the gutter cloaca means the gutter just like the gutter which is getting the uh, you know sewage water from two three areas all the sewage water is entering into this one and from here it is moving forwards in the same way uh, the literal meaning of cloaca is gutter only the literal meaning of cloaca is gutter so what is happening the three type of uh, canals are actually opening into cloaca cloaca what are the three canals these three canals are one is urinary one is urinary there is no urethral orifice in them that they, they have only cloacal aperture they have only cloacal aperture they have only cloacal aperture aperture or opening there is no urethra the digestive tract okay this is the alimentary canal alimentary canal the digested one okay so there is no anus here no urinary uh, opening no urethral opening no anus okay so they don't have anus as such they don't have any anus they have no urethral aperture or urethral external urethral meatus or aperture aperture they don't have they don't have a gonoduct they don't have a gonoduct or genital duct genital duct okay 
they don't have a gonoduct or genital duct. So what is happening? Uh, and the third one is their genital tract. The genital, the genital tract. So genital tract is getting the gametes. So from here, what is coming? The gametes. Gametes. From this one, what is coming? The feces. The feces. And from here, what is coming? The urine. Urine. It is not mixing here, but it is going out from this common chamber. There is no separate openings on the body. Here you will find the uh, you know, cloacal opening is there, which is opening and all the three are coming through this opening. Make sense? Okay, please remember, which open into the exterior. Respiration is by gills, lungs and through skin. The heart is three chambered, uh, two auricles and one ventricle. Uh, these are cold blooded animals, sexes are separate. Fertilization is external because they are NM nodes. They are oviparous. They are oviparous and development is indirect. Examples that Tudo and frog are different. Tudo is uh, Bufo is toad. Bufo is toad and frog is Rana. Tree frog is Hyla. Tree frog is Hyla. Salamandra is Salamander. Ichthyophis is limbless amphibian. It is a primitive amphibian, limbless amphibian. Ichthyophis. Ichthyophis. What is ichthy means? Ichthy. Ichthy means fish. Okay. So ichthyophis is a fish like. It's a fish like amphibian. It's a fish like amphibian. Fish like amphibian. Can you please tell me any fish like reptile? Better fish like reptile. Any anyone fish like reptile? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Ichthyosaurs. Very good. Very good. Ichthyosaurs. Saurus for reptiles and fish for amphibian. Ichthy. Ichthy means fish. Those are the reptiles which can go. Uh, in water, they can swim in water and they can again come on land. You remember that? Ichthyosaurs. Ichthyosaurs. Reptiles which are <coughs> fish like and ichthyophis is fish like amphibian. What fish like character? Limbless. Okay, that's all about them, my dear children. Hope you remember the difference of uh, toad and frog, okay? Toad and frog, and uh, the main difference in them is that uh, the frog is mostly found in the dried one, and the toad can be found in most, uh, like, uh, every time you can find the toad in water, okay? So it is mostly found in the water and seldom on the land. Then coming to reptiles, the class name referred to their creeping or crawling mode of locomotion, Latin repair or reptum to creep or crawl. They are mostly terrestrial animals and their body is covered by dry and cornified skin. Cornified means hard skin. Epidermal scales or scutes are also present. Scales or scutes are present and they are epidermal. They do not have external ear openings. Tympanum represent ear. Limbs when present are two pairs. Beta uh, external ear is only, only in, only found in. Can anyone know this? Only found in external ear. External ear or pinna. It is also known as pinna. Is only found in. In which one? Can you tell me? Yes, Priyanka gave the answer. It is correct. Anyone else want to give external ear? Yes, Sri Vaishnavi. Your answer is, Ajit, your answer is correct. Okay, uh, some people are, are uh, rough, Thalia. Okay, so pinna in mammals. Only in the mammals. It's a mammalian character. External ears or pinna in both answer will be mammals only. Tympanum represent here, limbs when present are two pairs. Heart is usually three-chambered, but four-chambered in crocodiles. 
limbs when present limbs when present because in some limbs are absent limbs are absent in can you tell me limbs are absent in dash limbs when present so absent kis mein honge they are absent in snakes you are right snakes gayatri priyanka you are right snakes manu go good you are right snakes limbs are absent in the snakes good snakes so snakes have absent limbs or ke absent in mein apart from limbs what is absent in them they their hearing power they don't have limbs they don't have a hearing power but they can smell they can smell that is the reason in the night time you will find snakes going uh, near the uh, you know, any uh, tree which can uh, emit scent okay so to attract the snake or any reptile you need to uh, you know put the scent so even if they don't see it clearly they can trace it just keep it white and smell they can trace by its smell so which organ they have can you remember two body parts two parts and uh, these are the two facial bones the name is taken from the two facial bones what is that organ which help them for smelling can you please tell me smell yes it is called jacobsar organ or vomero nasal organ there are two bones in the face one is vomer which is a single bone and nasal two bones okay nasal and vomer vomer there this organ is present called jacobsen's organ or vomero nasal organ my dear children hope this is clear to everyone heart is usually three chambered but four chambered reptiles are poikilothermous snakes and lizards shed their skin as skin cast they shed the skin and we can call them this uh, is known as the molting this is molting or skin casting or skin casting skin casting skin casting sexes are separate fertilization is internal because they are the amniotes they have internal fertilization and their oviparous and development is direct in all the amniotes what is commonly found in all the amniotes is just now we have seen i'll keep some of the points here which is only found in the amniotes one is internal fertilization one is direct development then other things are also there you know like like the nerves and all right now please learn these names chelony chelony is turtle testudo is tortoise testudo is tortoise chameleon chameleon is color changing lizard also called the tree lizard calotes also called garden lizard crocodilus is crocodile easiest to remember alligator is again alligator most easy to remember in alligator and crocodile both of them have four chambered heart hemidactylus is the wall lizard we find in the rooms classrooms or hostel rooms even home we find the hemidactylus and poisonous snakes naja naja so naja is uh, uh, now called naga <clears throat> okay so in north india it became naga naga i think uh, uh, yeah everywhere we call it naga only naja we write as naja but it became naga okay so it is a indian cobra okay indian cobra is naga and it is not the king cobra indian king cobra is naja hanna naja hanna king cobra naja naja is indian cobra this is important it is a we can call it as a poisonous snakes okay so these are the poisonous snakes which one one is a cobra cobra ck ck okay cobra and crate cobra and crate cobra and crate these will release the neurotoxin they paralyze the prey neurotoxin they paralyze the prey okay cobra and crate ck ck 
okay then viper viper and sea snakes viper and sea snakes okay viper and sea snakes sea snakes viper and sea snakes these are releasing hemotoxin beta ye hemotoxin that means they will stop the clotting and as a result of that they will stop clotting as a result of that the bleeding will uh, become pro, you know prominent okay what about the python bachcha python python anyone can tell me python what is python is it a poisonous or non poisonous non poisonous priyanka you are right python is non poisonous remember these are the four poisonous one cobra crate ck calvin clean and viper and snake vs vs have hemotoxin and ck have neurotoxin these two they are toxin paralyze and these two their toxin will cause the uh, blood circulation failure a blood uh, co coagulation failure beta remember naja bangaras bangaras is the crate and vipera is viper okay all the three of them naja bangaras and viper all three of them are poisonous snakes okay naja and uh, uh, bangaras these two have neurotoxin and vipera it has got the hemotoxin along with that some sea snakes also have hemotoxin they are very deadly and dangerous okay my dear children and naja hanna okay so which one naja hanna hanna naja hanna this is the king cobra it is called the king cobra king cobra naja hanna is the king cobra okay done dear children let me just quickly say to you any points in avis okay i think avis uh, uh, they have got uh, feathers the four limbs are modified into wings their jaws are modified into beak jaws are modified into beak and four limb are modified into wings the hind limb generally have scales and are modified for walking scales ekra in the hind limb scales and claws in the beta hind limb in the hind limb they have both the things one is uh, scales and number two is claws claws are present okay scales and are modified for walking swimming or clasping clasping the tree branch means holding the tree branch in a typical avian manner typical avian manner means like it has got uh, three three digits on one side and one digit on the other side just imagine three digits and one digit and then holding and then holding the tree okay so like this this is a typical avian pattern one behind and three in front these four digits are there so holding the holding the branch of a tree is called clasping clasping i'll quickly uh, read this and i'll see your comments also and they have got oil glands okay oil glands are present in mammals and birds oil glands are present in mammals and birds but sweat glands are only present in mammals okay in birds they have their skin is dried the only oily gland given is called uh, oil gland also called preen gland per preen p for priyanka preen preen gland p r w -E n preen gland and you must have seen uh, the birds they are just uh, you know uh, massaging the gland so that it can oil the feathers because they want the feathers to be waterproof you know water uh, water resistant these are present at the uh, you know tip of the tail so if you see the bird at the tip of the tail okay so if this is a bird and from here the tail is there at the tip of the tail here you will find uh, okay i'll make this okay here you will find the preen gland preen gland abhi kya karenge they will turn the head and will scratch it 
how they can turn the head because they have got monocondylic skull they have monocondylic who other have monocondylic remember rb rb have monocondylic monocondylic skull reptiles and birds have monocondylic amphibians and mammals have dicondylic keep amphibian here and mammals dicondylic rb monocondylic amphibian mammals dicondylic rb monocondylic skull they can turn and then they can scratch it they can scratch it okay so this is there <clears throat> okay and uh, the digestive tract of birds are additional chamber uh, there is a crop and gizzard there heart is com uh, completely four chamber they are warm blooded homeothermic animals that is they can able to maintain the constant body temperature and respiration is by is by lungs and they have got additional uh, supportive air sacs are there but those air sacs are not respiratory a respiratory uh, air sac means uh, it can help in exchange of gases but no non respiratory means it can only supplement but it is not respiratory it is not for exchange of gases sexes are separate fertilization is internal they are oviparous and development is direct this is all simple corvus is cow crow columba is pigeon columba is pigeon cetacula is parrot struthio is struthio is ostrich pow pow who who sing like this pow pow and we call it pow okay pow it's called pow Eptinodites is penguin and neofron is vulture. Neofron is vulture. Okay, so neofron 2020 NEET examination. Uh, it came. The name came neofron. It has got pneumatic bones. Then eptinodites penguin. Pow is peacock. Struthio is ostrich. Columba is pigeon, and Cetacula is parrot, and Corvus is crow. corvus is crow okay so can anyone tell me the scientific name of 1 2 3 4 birds can you tell me the scientific name of this bird first one come on scientific i'll see your options i comments endoskeleton is ostified yes flightless birds struthio neofron yes aditya priyanka your answer oppo your answer is correct and the correct answer is Uh, yes it is a uh, neofron vulture can you identify the second bird bird number 2 come on bird number 2 identify its truthio it is a flightless bird it is a fastest running bird among the birds it can run those who can run on leg it can run they run very fast it is the fastest running bird fastest running bird is truthio is truthio okay now <clears throat> the kiwi which is the uh, symbol of the australians uh, you know kiwi no yeah kiwi uh, australians are kangaroo new zealanders they are called kiwi uh, can you please tell me kiwi is a flying bird or flightless bird kiwi kiwi emu what are these type of birds yes they are also flightless kiwi is a flightless bird emu is a flightless bird and the bird which become extinct which was uh, the which bird has become extinct can you identify the bird which can become extinct which has re recently become extinct the name means fool the one who is fool the name of the bird in uh, i think uh, spanish or uh, in portuguese in portuguese language means fool yes you are right it is dodo dodo it is a recently extinct bird it means uh, dodo means fool and it is also a flightless bird identify the third and fourth and the class will be over bachcha third third bird cetacula ye class kab tak chalegi it is up to ye class uh... i'm not able to 10:15 na already your time is over okay so the fourth one identify the fourth one it is a national bird of india fourth one pow pow yes you are right and yes the previous one is cetacula and the fourth one is pow okay and my dear children that's all about this and uh, yes i can share the qr code of the board work okay 
so i can share the qr code of the board work okay now this will not be helping you what you can do based on this you can quickly make yours and only when you make yours okay then it can go into your memory then it can go into your memory okay so seeing this you can make yours and some more points can be added if you come across like we have missed those points some more points can be added my dear children that's all about this class and uh, your marks are really satisfying but not everyone is saying their marks so in that case uh, okay uh, don't worry uh, if you don't if you don't do well in your in your examination you don't have to shy because in that case my mistake is also there i take the responsibility also on my head my shoulder so half of responsibility we can share and then together we can work off so that we can you know i can guide you and the whole week you can uh, just change the style of studies and eventually you, you also come into the uh, 165 plus type of club okay so 165 plus club is a good club to be in that's all about this class bye bye take care god bless you ha huh, weekend syllabus I have guys we have given that in the group weekend syllabus i have made a whatsapp group of of oh, the children those who are those who have shared their number for the assignments and uh, one more assignment i have to give you because some of you did not uh, because you did not practice well that's the reason you were trapped you were trapped in the questions okay i'll tell you the syllabus of the coming test what is that जूलॉजी जूलॉजी ग्रुप कहा गया जूलॉजी ऑनलाइन हाँ ये एंड द वीकेंड सिलेबस फॉर जूलॉजी इज एनिमल किंगडम इन एनिमल किंगडम एमसीबी रेप्टीलिया एंड मैमिल्स ऑल फोर ऑफ देम स्ट्रक्चरल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एनिमल टिश्यूज एपिथेलियल टिश्यू कनेक्टिव टिश्यू in the connective tissue only loose connect up to loose connective tissue only the areola tissue in the loose connective tissue bones and cartilage is not there okay loose connective tissue is there uh we have, you can message me my number is 9887 okay iphone okay you can just give me the uh, whatsapp uh, message by saying that uh, uh, i am so and so and i am into the long term online i will share your name because i have to share then only i can put you in the group okay so i have shared my number also earlier uh, my number is 988 okay so my number is 9887173 and 33 and 5 so this is my mobile number you can send a whatsapp message by your name and you are in lt online lt online okay that's enough okay or better you write your lt online first and anyways you can write i'll <coughs> no note you and keep you in the group so if any updates i am having i'll be sharing it all the best bye guys bye bye take care bye bye <sighs>